Bridget here. Sorry? Where's Bridget? She's not here. <laughs> I can see that. Do you know when... Forget it. Bridget, it's me again. Look, I can't find you and I get a bit worried now. If you can't talk, please, just text me. Let me know you're okay. Cheers. Bye. J2O, please. What flavour? Surprise me. Chris, have you seen Bridget? Why is everyone asking for Bridget? The fact that I'm here must suggest that she's not. <coughs> I thought she was working tonight, that's all. Who else is looking for her? <coughs> you looking for Bridget? Hi, uh, yeah. I'm her friend. I'm her boyfriend. What do you want her for? Look, mate, we're not a tag team, all right? My name's Butch, nice to meet you. That's nice for you, Butch. So who am I, Sundance? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're Ed. Look, as I said, you're her boyfriend, and I'm her man friend. What do you want her for? It has nothing to do with you. It hasn't. Ed. I know it's a case for you, but not every man is driven by itch in their groin. <laughs> look, mate, I don't no, know... No, 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 you look. We're not mates. You want to come to me with attitude? <sighs> look, you claim she's your girlfriend, but you don't know where she is. You've lost her, mate. Is that right? <sighs> when the cat's away. Just stay away from her. Or what? You might like to throw your weight around at home, Butch. Maybe Ophelia is intimidated by you. Maybe that's why she went running off back to her parents, because she'd rather be anywhere else than be with you. What do you know about Ophelia? Bridget's little secret. I'm sorry. It's called pillow talk. No, listen, listen. No, you listen! You want to play happy families? Go play happy families with your wife! You want coffee and a slice of cake? There's plenty of cake in New Cross. I don't know what ideas you've been getting from Bridget, but this is my territory. I'm going to guard it like a feral dog. You think I'm joking, let me catch you in this calf or anywhere near Bridget again. Why would Bridget talk to Do you? Do you understand? It doesn't make no sense. Unless, of course, I've got this all wrong and you want to sell it outside right now. Please pick up. Bridget, if you get this call, meet me at your house. I'm going back there. I hope you're okay. Bridget, are you here? What are you doing here? You haven't been answering my calls. I didn't answer your calls because I don't want to talk to you. Can I turn on the light? No! I want to see you. I can't don't see you. Get it. I don't want to see you. Look, I went to the cafe and bumped into it. We kind of met. What do you mean, kind of? He was looking for you. I talked to the lady behind the bar and she told Ed. Right, for a skinny little freak, that Chris has got one hell of a mouth on her. I 
thought Ed was out of picture. I haven't seen Ed. Not since the pregnancy test went pink. Well, he was looking for you, so maybe he wants to come back. Maybe he wants to come back. Maybe he wants to be a father to his child. Maybe he wants me. Maybe he just wants free food and lodgings. Who knows what Ed wants? Who cares? I don't. No, you don't mean that. You're going to go through this on your own. Pregnancy, having a baby, raising a child. You don't want to go through that by yourself. Who died and left you a wound, Butch? I did perfectly well on my own, thank you. And what about you? You taking some of your own advice? Don't have a wound, remember? No, but Ophelia does. We've been friends a long time, Butch. If I can't tell you the truth, then who can? How can we tell each other the truth? But we can't even tell ourselves. What truth is that? <laughs> you came here to talk to me, Butch. So tell me, what truth is it that we can't tell ourselves? You see, the problem is, no one thinks men our age have anything useful to offer. But we weren't born with Alzheimer's, dementia, or Parkinson's. You look at us now, and you don't see human beings who have lived and loved, fought and won, and sometimes lost. We feel pain, but we had to learn how to smile through adversity. God has given everyone a voice, from the smallest to the eldest. And as such, each voice must be heard, even mine. I've made mistakes, terrible, terrible mistakes in my time. I've hurt some very special people and lost them forever. I wish I could turn the clock back, but I can't. I wish I could make amends, but I'm not allowed. And if ostracized by the ones I truly, deeply love, then how can I exorcise my demons? Where do I go for healing? You speak of love, but how can you know what love is? How can you exorcise your demons without a contrite heart? Can you not forgive me, Fee? I'm truly sorry. I love you. I cannot love you. But you did not teach me how to love. I can't forgive you. <coughs> you didn't teach me forgiveness. We all have our demons. I must Die with yours. Oh, what are you still doing up here? Nothing, Daddy. Have you finished your homework? Please finish. I do I have to make it? Do I? No, no. <laughs> Look, Mum will be home in an hour. Come on, I've set the bar. Not a word to your mother, Fee. You know. You'll send her to an early grave, or worse, an asylum. You'll destroy her. I am going to stop. Because I don't want her death on your conscience. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Fee, Fee, darling, I promise it'll be the last time. When she 
could no longer deny it, she blamed me. And then she hated me. She threw me out of the house and she stayed with him. She was afraid. She was afraid of being on her own feet. But I was afraid and I was alone. I was a child and I was afraid. They had each other. Who did I have? The chains and bars have gone, Fee. Look to the future. It's time for healing. It's time for us all to heal. ourselves no secrets. It's not a secret, it's just... My world's closing in on me, Butch. I want to know you're still here for me, no matter what. Always. I'm the one that came looking for you, remember? Then tell me what's going on. Don't judge me on things over which I have no control. I don't judge you. Don't put me on a pedestal either. I'm no good to anyone up there. I'm no different. My hair might be long and my skin fair, but I'm no different. I'm just like everybody else. You're not like anyone else. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. Above us only sky. Imagine all the people. I thought that school would never end. I'd get to the park and she'd be gone. <coughs> but there she was, like she said, under the big oak tree. Drenched in the rain, she waited for me. We talked for a bit, but we're terribly shy. Not wanting to rush that first kiss. I knew then then she'd be my wife. I'd stay with her for the rest of my life. It was all so simple then. Prejudice and ism played no part called a diamond. She was my jewel. Butch was the proudest boy at school. But we didn't remain innocent with our childhood dream. We left school and found her at 17. We learned how to argue. We learned how to fight. We learned how to put out love's candlelight. For she was a woman now and told me so. I was a man still meaning to grow. We abused our love until love wore thin. But we had roles to play and could not give in. Where she is now, I do not know. Footprints lost, covered in snow. Diamond is gone, a victim of pain. What I remember most Park and the rain. Go find her, Butch. Don't leave me, Bridget. Go find Ophelia. BFF, Pinky Swear. I don't want Ophelia. I want you. project anyway, so it's all good. Yeah, can't be too busy, can you? Sure. Sure. Well, if you do get another project come through, let me know, and if I'm not booked up, I'll jump it. Okay, mate. 
Love to Uncle Jeff and Aunt Pad. Take care. Talk soon. Hey, babe. In here. Have you been on that sofa all day? Because <laughs> that's the exact position I left you in. It's not the exact position you left me in. I got up twice to go to the loo. <laughs> oh, and to get fed water. Speaking of which, these are empty. <laughs> and? Well, you wouldn't mind getting me another one as you're up. Yes, I would. When I offered to buy you a drink, a two dozen pack from Tesco's every Friday isn't quite what I had in mind. I get the argument that if you're doing the same job as a man, you should be getting the same rate. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be happy doing a job knowing a female colleague was getting less than me, but we've all got to start somewhere. Uh, so I capitulate? I wasn't saying that. Okay, then run it by me again, because it sure sounded like that to me. Come on, Sarge. No! The come on, Sarge days are done! I've towed the line, I've worked hard. I've produced, I've delivered, I've brown nosed, I've, I've made coffee, I've run errands. All that's left for me to do now, Ed, is lay back and take one for the team. <coughs> and there is no way. Not after 11 O's, 5 A's, a first, and an MBA. I wasn't saying that, Sarge. You know, you don't even understand what I'm talking about, do you? Boy, can I pick them? What's oh. that supposed to mean? Do you think you're better than me? If you're happy to be out there prostituting yourself to the highest bidder, go ahead. I don't think it is, but if that's what makes you happy, go ahead. I'm not going to sell my soul for subjective approval of bosses not half as smart as me, but who earn twice as much. I want to be the master of my own destiny. Look at you. I know it isn't for you either. When are you going to recognise that for yourself? You don't need their approval. You're better than that. Do you think so? Yes, I do. You're hard working, you're intelligent, you're beautiful. You don't need their validation. You're better than that, you're better than them. I thought you'd quit. I have. But I still reach for one when I'm stressed. I've got a great remedy for stress. Oh, you have one remedy, Ed. <laughs> and you use that remedy in every situation. It works, though, doesn't it? <laughs> That's my girl. You don't need these. Do you know what I need? What do you need, Ed? That drink you promised me when you came in. You are incorrigible! Oh. <laughs> what you said before, you weren't just saying that, were you? You, you really meant it? What part of it? About me being intelligent and beautiful. Yes, I did. You're the most beautiful person I've ever met, inside and out. <laughs> you know, you know, I've always tried to do the right thing. Um, I've fought all this time to gain respect at home, at work, in previous relationships, but it never seems to work. I barely even get their attention. Sometimes I wonder, is it me? Is it me? <laughs> Have I got this all wrong? <coughs> it's them. They're not. <coughs> so glad I found you. I found my soulmate. <laughs> <laughs> Have you 
given any more thought to starting a family? Our family. Mm -hmm. Me too, but family should always come first. What? Do, do you think I make a good mother? An <laughs> excellent mother. Mm. <laughs> I think we make excellent parents. While you're at work, I'll be down the park with them every day. <laughs> <laughs> no one would ever call me an absent dad. I'd be there for them. I'd pick them up after school, attend school plays. Cheer them on at sports day. Get teary eyed watching them perform at their first Harvest Festival concert. I'd be proud of them. And I'd show them that I'm proud too. And I'd buy them things, the best things, not hand me downs or second hand stuff. I'd be a real dad. There for them. So I know what it means to be a real dad. <laughs> Should we have three or four? <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Sad to <you> sleep. <laughs> Probably for the best. <laughs> we'll be all right. We'll be all right. We'll just pick up the pieces and we'll move on. We'll be all right. You'll be all right. I think I'll be all right. You'll be all right. You're always all right, aren't you? I never had much choice. You think I had any choice? Mum, I'm not going to argue with you. I mean, not today. I always thought that you blamed me more than you blamed your father. Not more than him. You blamed me, though. Mum, it's OK. I've let it go. I've moved on. I really have. You expect me just to move on? Just let it go and move on? I thought you had years ago. No, Fee, <clears throat> no. Your father was a monster for what he did to you. And we buried him today. I'd be no less of a monster if I just let it go. <coughs> if you don't, it'll kill you. Like it did your father. He deserved to die. And I don't. Mum, I can't forgive you. And nor can I absolve you. You're my mother and I love you, but I can't forgive you, nor absolve you. You expect me just to let it go and be healed without your forgiveness? I don't know. I don't know. You always put the responsibility for your unacceptable, unacceptable behavior on other people. No one is responsible for your healing but you. And you? Like you said, I'm a survivor. I don't want you just to survive. I want you to live. I want my grandbabies to soar. Every expectations and every crossroads you come to will have an impact on not just you, but your baby. Your father was wrong for what he did to you. We buried him today. I was wrong. With and without your forgiveness, I will and must heal. You're a beautiful young woman with a baby on its way. Learn one lesson from me. Don't let other people's mistakes determine your outcome.
Someone's here to see you. Who? He came to the funeral and he's waiting in the car. Who? Who? Hello. You can come in now. The door's open. Mum, tell me you didn't do this. Mum, tell me you didn't do this. There's too many things at stake here, Fee. You'll be a mother soon. And as a mother, you make decisions as mothers that it's not only for ourselves, but for those we love. I can't do this today, <coughs> Mum. Not today. Hello, Butch. I'll leave you two to talk. There's much to talk about. Congratulations on the baby. This should be the best thing that ever happened to you. Don't let anything get in the way of that. Ophelia? Butch. You look well. I've been thinking about you and the baby. Sorry about Max. I missed you. I'm not coming back, Butch. I missed a few appointments. That's it right there. You think it's about the appointments? Well, Bridget's just a friend. I think it's about Bridget. Then what is it about? Uh, how can I fix things if you don't tell me what it is? It's about me, Butch, and you can't fix me. Well, let me try. No, I can't let you do that. I can't live with it on my conscience. What about the baby? She'll be loved and cared for. She'll need a dad. She has one. I want to do the right thing. I am prepared to do the right thing. I believe you, but the problem is neither of us really know what the right thing is to do. <coughs> so what do we do? Do we just muddle through a miserable existence, destroying our daughter's life along the way? No, we act like mature adults and we sacrifice our wants and our needs for the needs of our, of our family, of our child. What are you sacrificing, Butch? I'm not asking you to sacrifice her for me. You're my wife. She's just a friend. A friend that you want more than your wife. A friend that you, that you love more than your wife. I'm releasing you, Butch, because I want you to be happy. I'm releasing you because, because I love you. And I know that with me, you will never truly be happy. And I just couldn't do that to you. No. Sag, it's late. You should have been home ages ago. I'm getting worried. Look, call me. Let me know you're all right. No, don't call me. Just come home. Call this. Sorry? You should have been home hours ago. What? It's 1.30. You said you'd be back by 11. Ed! I was out with work. You knew where I was. <laughs> yeah, but if you say you're going to be back by 11, I expect you back by 11. <coughs> Ed, I'm not 16, and you are not my father. I'm not 
not trying to be your father. I'm trying to be a family. Oh, you're smothering me. How can I smother you? You're never here. Because what I want isn't here. It's out there. So what am I doing here? Oh, I ask myself that question every day. <laughs> so that's it? You want me to leave? No. I want the Ed I met in a cafe back. I'm still the same guy, Sedge, if you take the time to look. So focused on climbing the corporate ladder, you're missing what's right in front of you. <gasps> miss you? How can I miss you? You never go away! <laughs> I go to bed, you're there. I wake up, you're there. I go for a shower, you're there. I go to the gym, you're there. I can't breathe! I want a man, Ed. Not a puppy. You don't know what you want, Sedge. You think the grass is always greener, when it isn't. Sometimes you have to make a life with the grass you have. Mm. You know, I refuse to settle for second best. <laughs> I've walked away from better than you. I feel the exact same way. So why are we even having this conversation? Because you are still talking. <laughs> I'll be back for my stuff. I'd love to say this has been great, but I don't want to lie to you. Ed. Ed! Ed! I beg your pardon? Humphrey Bogart, I presume? <laughs> he never actually said that, you know. Whatever. Yeah. Is, um, anyone sitting there? Don't you don't, but you don't use me as an excuse. Get a life! Uh, can I buy you a drink? I'll buy my own, that way I can actually drink it. Come on, you look like a fun girl. Let me buy you a drink. Lonely, perhaps we uh, <laughs> You may be lonely, I'm alone. There is a difference. I'm offering you a drink, not a lifelong commitment. Stood up and I 
would just like some company, that's all. A drink. A drink. But no cigarette? Oh, you can have a cigarette if you like. On my terms? You make the rules. You're the boss. <laughs> rules are <clears throat> no names, <laughs> no telephone numbers, no addresses, no what are you doing next Thursday? Mm. Still want to do it? I'm only asking you for a drink. Mm. Mm. That's where it starts. Then you want my name. Then you want my number, you want my address, you want to come round, you want to come in, you want to move in, you want me to give up my career, you want me to give up my friends, you want me to give up my life, then what? The next thing I know, I'm barefoot, changing to the kitchen sink with a screaming, vomiting, crappy spawn for company you wearing you. You pissed off back to the bar to ask some poor, unsuspecting woman if she would like a drink. <laughs> Forget it. by a woman with a brain. No, 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 no. I do not feel threatened. <laughs> yes, you do. Because I've got an opinion. You are afraid of having this debate. I am not afraid of having a debate. And because I don't want a debate doesn't mean I feel threatened. I have come to a bar, not a university lecture room. And the fact that you have an opinion, young lady, does not mean you have a brain. <laughs> Let's go check on my car. Another time, perhaps. Oh, I forgot. That's not allowed, is it? Uh, that's your car. <laughs> uh, another time? Maybe uh, next Thursday? I'm sad I can be here for eight. Several times. Do I have to go through this every time I come round here? No. No. Oh, you're getting upset and I haven't even left yet. Would you stay if you could? What sort of question's that? I want to know. What's the point? You wouldn't stay if you could. Look, the reality is, I've got to leave. So I'm going. I don't want this to spoil our friendship, Butch. How many times are you going to go back to her begging? It's destroying you. You're going to get that. And if it's that stupid neighbour of yours, tell her I can make as much noise as I want. And if she's got any problem with that, I'm not going to the middle of next week. Uh, what if it's not a stupid neighbour? What if it's a stupid boyfriend? Then what are you going to do? Ed. I didn't know that. Didn't know what? I'm back, I'll be coming here tonight. What is it you didn't know, Butch? 
See, I've known about you from the very start when I saw you in a cab. There was nothing going on. <laughs> a man comes in and orders a coffee. No acknowledgement that you knew each other. Perfect strangers. Yet still, you knew to make his coffee with non-dairy milk. Amazing how you get that from perfect strangers. So maybe he's a regular. <coughs> then why no acknowledgement that you knew each other? Who's that charade supposed to fall? Look, where am I going? I don't want you to speak. I want you to think. Think about all the lies that have gone before. Before you open your mouth to me, I want you to know that whatever you say now, it better be good and it better be true. No, 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 he can't do this. Bridget, he can't do this. He can't walk up in here in the middle of the night and then demand, no, expect that things go back to the way they were. He can't do this, Bridget. Shut up, Bridget. No, you can't do this. Shut up, Butch. Bridget, Bridget, don't let him do this. He can't do this. You can't tell me what I can and cannot do. Shut up, both of you! Am I here? All this posturing, it's all about you! Does anyone remember that I'm here? That I exist? And if you want the truth, you have no right to come to my house unannounced. Since you left three weeks ago, I've had nothing from you. Not even a text! And Butch, just ten minutes ago, I was begging you to stay. But you weren't interested. You finally got what you wanted. You didn't care that I hadn't. You couldn't wait to get back to your posh little house with your posh little dog and call your posh little wife who doesn't want you. You wanted to climb into your king-size bed under your silk sheets and forget the poor tramp with Billy Wallbraver who'd do anything to be in the arms of a man who truly loves her. You both made me sick. It doesn't matter that you're both worthless. It matters that you both want to pretend to be something you are not! Never were! And never will be! If you two guys really want to fight over me, do it outside! I am not flattered! I am not impressed! What I am is tired! And I want to go to bed! Life is a funny thing. Three lovely girls in my class this year. All so very different. All so very similar. They joined my class for me to teach them how to achieve their dreams, reach their goals. None realizing that they were assisting me, allowing me to be healed, to find atonement. <coughs> and what for them now? No one can say for sure. Ophelia? Well, I'm sure she has a Pulitzer Prize in her somewhere bursting to get out. Sajmal, nothing less than a CEO of a FTSE 500 company. And Bridget, the family she craves, with a man who will love her and care for her as she would want and deserves. Oh, if only I had my time again. But we can never have our time again. <coughs> so we need to make the most of what we have now and heal from the past and use it as a reference point, <coughs> not a place of reverence. And if we are not imprisoned in our past, then we are free to appreciate and embrace the beautiful things out there waiting for us. Like a partner, not intimidated by an ambitious, intelligent, conscientious woman, and is willing to form a relationship that lasts longer than a fortnight. <laughs> In truth, I just want to be accepted and rewarded. I just want to be acknowledged. If you had any more acknowledgement, you would be unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter, the best medicine. I learned too late that you cannot laugh when you're dying inside. That was my message to these young ladies. And that is my message to us all. If we are to laugh and love and truly increase our quality of life as individuals and the lives of those we love, then we must first look to ourselves, examine our pain, and be healed.